Good stuff. Right. I'm just going to light a little Tom Ford room in sensor. Oh, that's nice. Very nice, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Yeah. Summer, summer it's... breeze, I think it's called. Is that? <laughs> no, it's called London. London. Well, the Oda London. Oda London. Yeah. It's basically <laughs> diesel and. Um... <laughs> Well, no, it's all right. You've got its emissions mission uh, zone now, isn't it? So it's all right. Stuff. Yeah, it's a yeah, ULEV. It's all electric. A ULEV. Exactly. Yeah, look, look, we're going, we're going, look. Excellent. Yes. <laughs> Welcome to another edition of the BTCC Roundup Show. I'm really excited to be joined by someone who, you know, you can't use the word legend too often. Everybody uses it a bit too bit too obviously now I think but we can obviously say that we're with Jason Plato here who is a legend of the British Touring Car Championship and um, obviously I do a little bit of you know research before I have a chat with our guests on the show here and uh, his Wikipedia page goes on and on and on and on but really interesting stuff all sorts of bits and pieces and tangents go on so we'll have a chat with Jason about you know his career how he's gone this year in the British Touring Car Championship and what happens in the future with Jason Plato I'm joined by Matt Salisbury who'll bring a few facts and figures to the to the argument just to see how we get on but first of all Jason how are you doing morning everybody morning morning, morning. morning Sean uh, yeah, okay thanks <coughs> Uh, well, I was doing all right. Now I've just looked at me, me pack of CSA cigarettes and found out I've only got one left. So I'll have to, I'll save that. Is that your missus taking them out of the packet when you don't know? A, I'll save that for a stressful moment, which I'm sure is going to come up imminently. <laughs> That's a good stuff. So your year so far, how's it gone? You look happier than you have done for a few seasons. Uh, I mean, results-wise, uh, it's not been a, a great year, but you know, there's been you know genuine reasons for that. But in terms of in terms of in terms of um, you know me, me personally, um, I've really enjoyed you know my year with B, with B, BTC Racing. Um, uh, you know, they're they're um, they're you know a great bunch of people. Some really good engineers there uh you know it's a race team run and operated like you know some of the bigger teams i've i've been lucky enough to drive with at various stages of, of my career and i don't mean that to be disrespectful to any of the more recent teams i've i've driven for um but it's just a fact, you know, there's yeah. the, the right sort of budgets there, the right sort of staff are there, the right numbers of staff are there. Um, you know, there's there's a, a good proportion or a good percentage of full-time employees. And that's really important rather than just having weekend warriors. Um, and they just do stuff well. And, you know, I have absolute confidence in, in their abilities to give me the kit to do my job. And I think I think you know, look, looking at results this year, um, you know something weird happened middle of the year when we got to um, Alton Park. In that all the performance, <laughs> either our performance, our straight line speed performance went went down, uh, and we know it did, um, or or the other engine manufacturers straight line performance went up or a mixture of both. And we've really not got to the bottom of it since then. And I think as the series is, a, 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 you know, has evolved this year with, uh, you know, the, the abolition of success ballast, you know, bringing on stream the hybrid package, it has turned the BTCC more than it ever has been before, and it always has been, but it's turned it into an engine performance formula. And that if you don't have the right sort of straight line speed, you, you ain't going to go nowhere. And it's very difficult during the races because there's no success by ballast. So, you know, we're not see, seeing the big shakeups in qualifying that we've been, you know, we've become accustomed to. Um, the status quo is what it is, and it's very is therefore then very difficult to overtake, especially when you're losing time and all the bits between the corners. And I, I think it's probably fair to say that both um, 
both myself and Josh, midway through the year, were probably overdriving the cars a little bit just to try and make yeah. a deficit. And of course, that's that's. Um, it just exasperates the problem, doesn't it? Because then, it, 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 exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And, and, and you know what? Our, our, our lap time comes from time on, you know, from being really good on the brakes and very good on corner entry. But the yeah. problem is when you're in, you know, you can do that in clean air. Yeah. But yeah. when you're in a race, you can't do that. You know, I, you know, I can't go as late as I want on the brakes when I'm in a train of cars because guess what? There's a bloke in front, um, and I can't go through the corner. At the same with, with the same sort of energy because there's a guy in front and once that once once we're not able to do, do that our lap time just disappears so it's been really frustrating and i really feel for for josh actually because you know and i've, I've said this before and i and i really do mean it you know he's he's a world-class driver operating at a very very high le level and he's just not had the engine performance you know, this year, which he needs to mount a championship campaign. And it's okay saying, look, he won four races at Thruxton, but Thruxton is not about engine performance, it's about no, chassis. No. Yeah, and yeah, I yeah. honestly believe, you know, we've seen it time and time again this year. We, we, we've got a great chassis, which ultimately means we've got great engineers, which means the interface between them and us as drivers, that's working well. Um, so I, I guess that's a long way to answer your question, but but you know, I'm happy with my performance this year. I think I think you know, if you look back at probably the hardest race of the year, it's Snetterton, physically, mentally, um, lots of corners. You know, I was on the button there, which, which tells me I can still do do the job. Because guess what, I'm fit. I'm fit 55 next week, and to race in you know, three races in a day at 65 oh. degrees, can't, can't be touch. And I've not been to the gym in yeah. school. And all these young lads are there three times a week. Well, guess what? They look shit when they got they got out of the car. I was re reaching for a marble gold and was all right. So well, that, I mean, that's, that says a lot, though, doesn't it? It says a lot. Because having said that, I do think you actually look fitter this year. There, there's, you know, you definitely, you know, I don't know if you, it's a conscious thing or it's just something you do look, you look fitter. But it's like two or three years ago. Maybe there's a few little extra pounds on there that might have sneaked in. Sneaked <laughs> in That's not your to talk, Sean. Oh, man, I love that. But not your uh, wallet. Not your am wallet. I, am I going to counter that? Uh, I mean, you might, you might be right. I mean, you know, I'll be really honest. You know, uh, my, my enjoyment in BTCC after my first year at BMR... Uh, in the Volkswagen, and, and to be honest, you know, I, I should have won that chat championship. I mean, I've never seen a grid of drivers indicate to allow another one to go through. That seems a bit strange. But anyway, you know, that was a good year for me. And then the first year with the Subaru was a good year, having, <laughs> having been the bloke who helped put all that and bolt all that together. Uh, it was a bit unsavory what went on. And then, do you know what? That really hurt me. Both, both professionally, uh, uh, financially, because my invoices still have to be paid, and um, uh, and and personally, that 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 really hurt being shafted the way I was, and 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 you know what? Not not to cry when I then left them to go to PMR. You know, my first year of PMR was pretty on the ball, but then all that kind of changed, and uh, you know, the t the team weren't as well funded internally from their perspective, not, not my perspective, but from their perspective, as it was before COVID struck in, in 19. And that turned into a pile of shit as well. So, I mean, I think it's fair to say, uh, you know, having those sorts of knocks at that stage in my career, uh, at the age I am, they're probably bigger knocks and they have a bigger effect on you. In, in, in as far as, you know, back in the early days, you know, brick wall comes up, you run at it, you smile, you hit your head, you jump up, you smile again, and you hit it again. You know, catapult yourself forward 25 years or whatever it is, and, you know, it's the same old shit year in, year out. You kind of don't get, you don't get up with as much vi vigour and enthusiasm to hit your head on the brick wall again. And I think that probably happened. So, 
you know, the turnaround in me personally this year, I mean, I've even though I'm never happy unless I'm winning, I've been happy with my performance and I, I, and I can't lay any blame, any blame at the team. They've done a brilliant job for me. And I, I, I you know, I'm very fond uh, I, I, and I love them. I think it's a fantastic team. I really do. I wish I'd discovered them years ago, to be honest. When I first came, I was like a rabbit in the headlights because I started, I, I, I always wanted to do touring cars yeah. and ended up doing it when I was like 44 or something, which is, you know, it's probably a little bit late, but that's usually where a lot of people do it because that's the only time they can actually end up doing it. Um, and, and I was always very average racing driver. So that's, it was never going to get any better going into the, <laughs> the, the a grid where everybody's really good. But we, we went to the media uh, meeting, the first meeting, and you went out of your way to come up and shake my hand, and say, welcome to the British Touring Car Championship, Sean, which actually was actually a, quite a, a big deal and showed, you know, a lot. Uh, for, for me, it was it was a huge thing because obviously you're 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 a big star. We we've, we've worked together before years ago doing manufacturer days and all that sort of stuff. Mm. But it's it it was actually really good. But one thing I was always impressed with you and Matt is that you've got this great long career mm. and to keep your momentum going, to keep that competitive edge mm. going. That that's. That's impressive. I mean, I think you see if you, you know, you're seeing it with Formula One drivers now. They're starting so early that they're starting at five years old. <laughs> By the time they get to 17 and 20, <laughs> they've already done more racing than most people have done. But and they start, I think they, you know, they get to 25, they're they're burnt mm. out, if you like. But to keep that going and also to keep your competitive edge off the grid with your commercial side as well, which I think is, you know, it is a big talent. I mean, and, and how do you do that? How do you keep that mojo going? it's not really a simple answer to that because it, you know it, i mean if I th if i think back to going back a long time back to the you know the the well if i start at the beginning actually you know where, where, when i got my first break in touring cars with williams uh in 97 um you know, there was lots of lessons leading up to, the, to, to, to that happening. And one of the lessons was when I, when I you know, I, I won a test because I won the Spider Sit Series uh, in 96. So I won a test with, 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 with Williams in the works, Renault. Did, did a great job, went to meet Frank and thought, do you know what, I'm, I'm in with a shout here. I've been tipped off by Will Hoy during the, nine, during the, the 96 season that he was out of contract, wasn't going to resign. So there was a place there. And obviously I was very good friends with Re Renault and, 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 you know, had been with them for a good proportion of my earlier career, if you like. And I generally thought I've got a chance here. And, <laughs> you know, second time I met Frank, he called me into, you know, for a meeting only to be able to look me in the eyes and say, look, you haven't got the job. Uh, which was a hard thing to, to 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 go through, but nevertheless, it did it did teach me something. And the only reason why I didn't get the job was because I didn't have any profile, and they wanted to go with someone. It was either going to be Morbid Deli an XF1 driver or Bullion, their their test driver yeah. in Formula One, and they had profiles, and that was not just important for 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 them, but important for Renault, but 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 not just in Renault Ren Ren UK. Per se, well, it was important for 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 I know France, where a, you know, a good ch chunk of the budget was coming from, and that was a big lesson actually. So, from a very early onset, you know, as soon as the Williams deal came along, I then you know put a load of effort into getting the TV profile because I figured out that if if um, you know probably you know the. the the, the blurred lines between being confident and arrogant are very, very, very fine. And I don't see arrogance. I just see confidence. So the, the inner confidence I had in my own ability to drive a, a racing car has always been there. And I needed something else to give me an advantage that if two guys were equally skilled in the car, what would be the the the, the deciding factor if one get get in the job? And those early lessons with Williams taught me that it was profile. And then, but but also in those days, we weren't allowed sponsorship internally. You know, okay. everything on me was theirs. You know, I signed all those rights away. 
that's the contract sign it jp what well, can i not no you can't that's the deal and i was allowed two tiny bad badges on on my arm um one badge on my helmet i think by memory and that was all the way through uh including you know three years at w w williams two and bearing in mind the williams contract was originally collaborated between frank patrick some of their f1 stuff and ian harrison well i went to drive for ian at Vauxhall at triple eight in 2000 2001 most of the you know their contracts coincidentally were quite similar so it wasn't until i then got to say at when i managed to put that whole deal together that i then during this process of being with Williams and being with Vauxhall, I then realised that the marketing element was something which I, I wasn't allowed to tap into, but nevertheless, it was something worthwhile to go, to go at. So when, when you know, I put the, the say it thing together, I made sure that I was epicet said centric to the whole of their marketing mix. Mm -hmm. Everything hung off me. I was the face of it all, in, including their... The TV show we did called Racing Rivals with me and Nell McAndrew. Yes, I did try to snog her. No, I didn't. Um, who, uh, we, we who, wasn't who wouldn't? Who wouldn't? Exactly. I mean, it was a lunge, to be honest. I just lunged <laughs> with lips open and, and, and she moved and I hit, the, I hit her sh shoulder. And she looked at me on, on a racetrack where we were fi filming. And like, what was that? And I said, well, I saw an overtaking manoeuvre, so I went for it. Exactly. God loves a trier. Yeah. yeah. Um, so... It wasn't until then, actually, then did I then really tap into the marketing element of it. And up until that point, no other drivers were doing that. And I mean, nobody. Nobody was marketing SAT savvy, probably because they weren't allowed to, because mm -hmm. back in the super touring car days, it was very F1 and its outlook. Uh, and yet I managed to, 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 to really understand the marketing. And then that was another lesson that... A, if you've got the profile, well, assume, assume, because I always do, I can do the job in the car. So then I can do the job out of the car because I've got a profile. And guess what? A lot of the money is swashing around because of my involvement. Mm. That, you know, all those three things together, they're going to blow anyone out of the, you know, out of the, out of the, 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 the market. If there's, if there's only one seat and there's two of us going for it, guess who's going to win? And that was my philosophy. Um, and do you know what? That served me pre pre pretty well. But, um, you know, the, the so, so, yeah, to answer your question, from a very early point in time, it wasn't it wasn't something that I struggled to get out of bed in the morning to do because I loved it. I enjoyed it and I enjoyed all the elements of it. You know, the the, the you know, the chase to, to land a deal, to land not just a deal with the team, but also to maybe get a new manufacturer involved of which there'd been many, in fact, most of the new ones, I've been epicentered to, to bring them in, you know, to do that, to keep your performance on track. All of those elements have always been really enjoyable and great fun. And it's only since I spoke a little earlier, later on in life, when actually the wheels started to fall off some of the associations that I'd made, um, i.e. The, the BMR was, was the first time it all started to go a bit pear-shaped, um, and did end up going pear shaped. Then, then it became harder to get out of bed and yeah. do and, and 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 put things in place because because I saw stuff going on um, behind the scenes that I I didn't like. I didn't think was right. It certainly wasn't honourable. And yet you've got no say in it. Yeah, yeah. because because that the whole. Um, you know, touring cars have changed so much from end of, uh, from say 2010, 2011. Uh, in fact, that's not true, actually. Yes, it changed so much, but 2012, 13, 14, I put that MG deal together and brought yeah. Tesco going. And that was a fantastic time for, for me, for my motorsport, business wise, marketing with my you know my, my my company brand pilot with my business partner Heidi Johnson Cash yeah that was an epic time and yet we were the only ones having a great time 
the whole of the industry was having a shit time because Toyota Touring Cars had changed and it had gone very, I, I don't want to say mm. club motorsport, but kind of was from where it, from where it yeah, had been yeah. to. And then, you know, when, when that deal ended and it just run, run, run its course, then I was into something which is a bit strange. And, 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 and it, it didn't work. It, it, you know, it didn't work the way I wanted it to. So at that point in time, it was difficult to keep motivated because I, I just didn't have any say in, in how things were going just, on. Just slightly, uh, and that's just, when the rocks just slightly started. going back to the MG time when you had you, you, one big thing, which so, so interestingly, it took sort of seven years of touring car racing before you could use your well, one of your big skills, which is sort of the off off track marketing side up until you know that's quite a long time of not having to use those skills which now you're quite well known for because we had a chat with tom ingram a couple of weeks ago and he was very complimentary about the input that you had in and what he learned from you when you had you started the kx academy um, yeah which you know there's been quite some you know lots of names on there who ended up yeah. in touring cars and other stuff but he was probably the biggest name i think and he was really I mean, he's he's somebody else who I think because of your input, he's quite commercially savvy as well off the track. Yes, he is, and you know, he was our first darling, if you like, of of the KX Academy. You know, he 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 was, and we worked, you know, we worked a lot with with Tom, um, and, and Tom. To be totally fair to Tom, boy, did he put effort in, and that mm -hmm. impressed both myself, all of our stakeholders, Heidi. He, he he was someone that really um you know Sean uh, and was was quite different to the to a lot of his contemporaries at that moment in time and I think that's evident in the way he goes about his business you know to this day um so yeah I've got an awful lot of you know good memories and and respect um uh, for Tom but also you know jo Josh was on our program um you know we worked a little bit with jay kill i mean there's lots of people um that that used you know that academy which me and heidi put together and they used it correctly and it's helped them on I, i'm not going to take any credit for their success other than we gave them a springboard which they could yep. either use to their to their you know to good effect or actually just walk across it and get nothing. And most, uh, yeah, most, is that fair? A high percentage of those who went through the program and took quite large sums of money off us in bursary funds didn't use it correctly. And there have been a few who have. And, and Tom and, and Josh, uh, you know, are, 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 are two names that have gone on to great stuff. I mean, it's just, you know, Jason's gone on about the commercial side of racing quite a bit and how it changed from, you know, that first time with Renault through to the days with Seat. But, I mean, from Seat to now, the commercial landscape when you're putting a deal together is, is completely different. It's not a case of stickers on cars. It's, you know, now sponsors are looking for social media reach. They're looking for how many followers you've got on Instagram and, and TikTok, you know, that kind of thing. As a as a driver who's been around for such a long time, does that make it more challenging to kind of keep yourself relevant to commercial partners when you've got you know these social media savvy youngsters who are all over all over Instagram and TikTok those kind of things, or does the fact that you've got that profile already and people know who you are mean you know you can still keep working to to get those deals in place? Um, I think I think the simple answer is uh, it, it doesn't really, you know, I'm I'm on top of that and have been for quite a few years. That said, uh, I'm on top of Twitter, and there's all these other weird platforms, and, and you know, TikTok to me, I fucking hate it because it because <laughs> I, I just I just see what it does to my kids, and they can't stand still, and they're yeah. jigging around. I'm like, just stand still for crying out loud. <laughs> However. <laughs> <laughs> However, <laughs> I, I don't really like Instagram very much because I just see, you know, I've got two young girls, 12 and 14. I just see the actual carnage that that shit creates in terms of, it's just vacuous showing off nonsense. And whilst I know it is, it is used commercially, obviously, 
I don't think, I think Twitter is probably still for motorsport the best medium in that it's 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 quite it's quite newsy it's it's releasey it's got all the elements where which probably answers your question i can't keep looking around corners to find the next new thing i'm just if i'm really honest if you look at probably you know i could get onto one of my social metric programs now and have a look at my um my online uh, units I want a better expression and they're going down in terms of not my followers but the amount of t- time I invest in it I'm just sick to death of it from a personal perspective because it takes up so much time and actually I've always been an advocate of less is more and um, so no I don't I don't think it gives the youngsters an advantage I don't because they because they got no plat they, you know they they've got no far far followers really you know unless you've got you know over 50 60 70,000 far followers so so what it doesn't really mean anything um yeah. you know and I've probably got more than d- double of the next highest in tour touring car May- maybe even more than that I don't know I don't know but it's a very useful tool but I think it's very easy to get distracted by all that and it's just vacuous crap a lot are it. you gonna, you know, are you gonna be sitting in your rocking chair when you're 75, thinking about the Twitter posts or Instagram posts you made 20 years ago? I don't think you are. No. You know, you're gonna be in, you'll be looking, thinking about the podiums you've been on, really, rather than. Well, the well see, exactly, and the and the other thing is, uh, you know, as a as a parent, as a dad mm-hmm. with two, you know, young ladies now, mm-hmm. I'm very aware of the dangers that social media has, and also. Having pals who have got uh, allowed themselves to, to to get sucked into weird echo chambers and losing the power of uh, critical thought and being able to change your mind and yeah. see, and being you know quite very interested in current affairs. But it's just an age thing, isn't it? I see a lot of. I see a lot of danger in social media um, and I've seen some pretty horrific do- documentaries on how dangerous it is. Yeah. yeah. It, unless, unless, unless you're really s- savvy, unless you understand how it all works. And, and once you understand that we are the currency, <laughs> yeah, we're, being played, we're being played, we're being manipulated. Once you understand that and you then, you know, stuff which just arrives you then start filtering out because it, they're all just trying to put you into echo chambers it's all a bit deep but as a dad i have to be really careful of that so probably my dislike my growing dislike for social media is based from a perspective as a as a dad knowing how it can screw people over i think i think, I think we all really need to be careful about you know uh, wanton use of social media it's all right in you know in a motor racing capacity because it you know I, I, it's like a it's like a press outlet you know i'm propagating stuff but it's a toxic nasty place and it's yeah. full of it's full it's full of arseholes and yeah. i mean you'll know you'll know that to an extent from your racing perspective because you're someone who if someone wants to go on twitter and troll you about something that's happened in a race or you know turn around and say oh jason you, you're past it you're not winning races anymore yeah, yeah. You're quite happy to then go and give it back uh yeah i mean there have been you know back in the day before there was any social media really there was well you did used to pop up on the forums as well well do you know what that, that there's, <laughs> there's that great moment and do you know what? i still up until about four years ago i still bumped into this bloke in oxford and it was on a piston heads thing, and this and and uh, anyway, this thread well, went, went global, and I I came to this thread about seven pages late, and I read the opening post. I'm like, well, that's total and utter bull. So I had to put the record straight. Um, it just went out of control. Where it, it went global, it ended up being 100, 180 pages long, and in the end, piston heads had to, you know. We, with great humour, said, look, we've got to stop this now. And to be fair to the guy who wrote this total shit, um, he did put his hands up. And actually, it's, it's, it's I know this because I've subsequently far followed up some of the hype. 
that's being used in some oh, yeah. school environments to teach people about how social media, you know, seven pages of pylon, people jumping on this on the back of this bloke and having an attack at me. And it was only until I then started to put the record straight, did all, did all these people which were originally attacking me, did they then go, oh, hold on, there's another part of the story. And so it's, it's used as a case study, believe it or not. And that's quite nice in a way. Yeah, anyway, yeah. Social me me media. Let's talk exactly. about something else. I agree, I agree. So just very quickly, one of the rare drivers who've driven across all the levels of, of British touring car regulation, so super touring to... Well, S S two thousand. There was the was it, was it BTC? Was it called BTC in that bit, I mean, the, it was, bit yes. in the middle? It that was, was there. Yes. Oh, was <laughs> okay, right. So then Super two thousand, and then on to what's NGTC as it was then. So um, give us your thoughts. What do you think was the best era for a driver? Forget about fans and the rest of it, but for you to actually physically drive a, a British touring car, what's the best car for you? I mean, but by by a, a long way would be the super touring car days okay um, for what reason what was the main reason for that um you know the cars were the cars were pure in that um uh in, the teams had quite a lot of scope to so there were limits but there wasn't many limits you know there was engine car it's, engines got to be normally aspirated there's a minimal weight limit, eight and a half thousand revs. That's about it, really. Um, you know, re rear wings had to be a certain size, profile could be whatever you wanted. So there was constant, you know, as we imagine motor racing to be, uh, there was constant de development. And, you know, I can remember some weeks, I'll be testing for four days a week yeah. in yeah. the season, you know. And that was great. That was a brilliant time to be involved. And that was where, where, when I first got involved in touring cars uh, and arguably where, where, you know, where, where, where I learned my craft. Mm. Uh, but the cars were just brilliant to drive, you know, that, that because, because, it, um, because the engine regulations were, um, were quite firm in that there was, a, you know, there was a box around what you could do. Mm. And you could do whatever you wanted within that framework. So, of course, all the best engine uh, uh, tuners and designers all arrived at a similar point very quickly. So there was no difference in straight line speed amongst the cars. I mean, they all went down the straight the same speed. And that's one of my big criticisms over the recent years, that the delta between what should be the same straight line speed is monstrous. I mean, you know, it wasn't that long ago. We could see 10 mile an hour difference. I mean, that's just ridiculous. Yeah, and that yeah. was one of the great things, and that promoted great racing back in the day. That everyone went down the same, went, went down the straight the same. Everyone exited the corner, engine performance wise, the same. Um, and then it just be became down to how well you worked with your engineers and your chassis and da 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 da. And that was really great to be involved with. And every every time the car run, there was a development part on it, and that might have been a very small part, or it might have been quite a big, you know, a big. Uh, development cycle that you're in so that that was great you know the, the downside of that was the budgets were ridiculous and mm -hmm. uh, you know it then got to such a stage where super touring imploded because the the, the manufacturer um, landscape changed in that you know was it Renault bought Nissan or Nissan bought Renault I can't remember but they all started buying each other so then you couldn't have um, you know big umbrella brands they would never be allowed to compete against each other. So, yeah, the perfect storm arrived and it and it uh, 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 and it imploded, but it imploded because it became too expensive. So, and then we got onto the BTC cars, which was the Vauxhall Astra that I drove. Do you know what? That, that they were great little bits of kit. Um, a lot of the high tech stuff was taken off. Did you really notice it? Yes, from a driving perspective, you did. But did the punters really notice? Probably not. No. 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 Probably not. Um, S2000 was a great era in that, you know, it all, there was lots of cars throughout the whole of Europe, which were all run, running the same spec. Uh, that was good for the teams because it meant their, you know, their hardware then had an intrinsic value at the end of the year, which, you know, arguably in super touring car days, they just simply didn't. Um, and then, you know, the early, the early days of NGTC were great in that cars were really hard to drive. 
you know, more often not power steering didn't work. Um, and, um, and that was a real challenge. Um, but I must admit, I've never been a fan, a true fan of turbo derived uh, engine formulas where there's balance of performance, um, by by the organizers because it's just too easy to get that wrong and it's too easy for the really clever engine designers to beat the system and to submit stuff which actually is crap at the measurement points you know yeah. how, how the boost is calculated and obviously i can't talk about that because i'm not allowed to um but you know there are ways to to cheat that system and there are ways to make your engine not appear good in the scientific tests that they do so then you get more boost. So actually, it's it just got itself in a pickle. And, I, and this isn't a criticism of Toka. This is just the way it is. It's got itself in a bit of a pickle in that, you know, we're still ha moaning about engine performance. And do you know what? Honestly, I could sort it out in 15 minutes. Because you, you look at real data. You don't look at spreadsheets. You just look at real data, time under the graph. And you go, right, that's got too much grunt, turn it down. That hasn't got enough, turn it up. And, the, and, and, and it's not about break horsepower. The big thing about touring cars at the moment is you need torque. And the only way you get torque is boost. Boost doesn't give you break horsepower, it gives you torque. And we all know driving around in a, in a turbo car makes yeah, third yeah. gears yeah. enough. Well, isn't you, it? you don't rev it. You don't need four. You don't rev, rev it. And that's the difference. Mm. And what, and what, and, and the other thing is, you know, people look at at, um, at, at speed trap de data. Now, speed trap de data, by and large, isn't right at the end. Of, it's not V max. It's not right at the end of the, the straight. It's probably about nine tenths down the straight. But once a car, once a big touring car, and they all are big, once they get to about 100 mile an hour, drag, as we all know, drag is exponential. So you need you know, substantially more power and more power at 100 mile an hour to get to 105 than you do at 50 mile an hour to get to 55. Massive amounts more power. So consequently, all the cars, by and large, once they get towards the end of the straight, they're all doing similar speeds, but it's the time it takes to get there. And that's not, speed traps don't give you that information. And that's where torque is really important. So then, just just quickly on that though is is because obviously the the, the, the engine you know at the moment that, that, that you're running is is the Toka M engine the M Sport engine which is new this year yes but that's also being run by the Toyotas and that you know Rory Bush had a particularly good weekend at Silverstone which is you know a power circuit which then it, that points more as much to installation as much as anything else no no sure I'm not going to disagree with that you know yeah. there there are things that, you know I'm not just you know, I will always talk. If it's pointing the fifth finger, guess what? There's three pointing back at me. I, I know that. Uh, and so, some days you get that right. Sometimes the shape of the front of the car, which guess what? That's just what you've got, can help with the insulation and the cooling package. But we've made pretty good gains there. And 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 honestly. I could have been on the front row at Silverstone. I cocked up my lap. I just couldn't quite get it nailed. And that could have been a very different scenario. Yeah, yeah. But I guarantee you one thing. Put Rory Butcher in 10th on the grid, he would have ended up 10th or below. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because when you're, when you're down on power, when you're down on torque, and he most certainly is, that's just a fact. But when you're in clean air, you, 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 a, you've got lower charge temperature than everyone behind you. Um, a, you can pick your lines, you can look for the tyres, all that sort, sort of stuff. Not decrying anything he did. He did a brilliant job, and so did Toyota. But had he been 10 tens on the grid, guess what? He would have done no better, no better than we did. Whereas we see the BMWs, we see the Fords, we see lots of other cars being able to carve the way through. And the, you know, the, the Hyundai, yeah. it's because they've got grunt, they've got torque. Yeah, and yeah. Um, that's the difficulty. So qualifying becomes everything. And probably, you know, did I put myself under too much pressure at, at Silverstone? I probably did, actually. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I didn't get, yeah. you know, first set, set of tyres, got balked. No one's fault, just lots of cars on track, trying to get themselves some space. Oh, man, I've only got, you know, 
four more tyres to go. Pressure comes on, you just don't nail the lap. And qualifying becomes everything. And, you know, we've seen now, if you win race one, there's a very good ch chance you'll win race two as well. Yeah, yeah. No, I However, think that's definitely a that all sounds like I'm having a moan. I'm not. No, no. I mean, no, 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 you know, the, 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 you know, the, the, the Ebersol engine simply is not good enough at the moment. And, and they know that and they've got to make improvements. Um, uh, and, and the hybrid thing, do you know what? It's, it's, it's a great idea. It just needs more grunt. It needs mm -hmm. to be 50 horsepower rather than 25 because it actually doesn't give you enough. It's, no. Uh, and also, if you've got a great base engine, having another 25 horsepower on a great base engine is worth more than having 25 horsepower on a, a not a great base engine. So actually, it's all playing down the rule of engine performance. Um, but it's still a very, very, very good world-class championship. And the people in charge, Alan Gow and, and all the people at Toka, You've got a really tough job to, to 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 make it work for everybody and uh you know there's been lots of change this year including the m sport engine and and that will improve for sure it's just uh, you know unfortunate had we had the original engine you know the swindon engine from last year guess what we would have been winning races and we, we we've overlaid the data we know how much slower we are in a straight line yeah. despite having a better chassis than we did last year um but you know it is what it is you know, there's, uh, you can't be happy all the time touring cars. No, I think it's no, quite, no. quite unusual, I think, to see, um, you know, drivers like yourself and like Matt Neal be so linked to one championship during their career because you get a lot of drivers who will do four or five years in one championship. They'll go off and do four or five years in another one. That they'll move around. I mean, you always said the BTCC was what worked for you because it was ideal for your commercial partners. Yep. Of course, as you've got older, you know, you've got the kids, so you don't want to be going gallivanting off around Europe, you know, when the, when the girls are at home. <laughs> but you have done the odd race elsewhere. You know, you did world touring car races with Seat, yeah, uh, yeah. you've been down under and done supercars. Yeah. I mean, it's a big weekend for us with the, the title decider. It's arguably an even bigger weekend down under because it's Bathurst. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, for a, for a driver to you know, have a, enough of a profile over here to go and do Bathurst. How did you find that going off doing something different? Oh, I loved it. I mean, I can remember sat as a kid watching Bathurst with my dad. I can remember sat in his lap when, when, when you know, back in the days when it was on primetime TV. Dickie Davis, I think, even <laughs> introduced it. I mean, that's how long ago it was. <laughs> and I, I can, you know, I can remember this. I can remember the V8 Jags over there, not the, the V12, the XJSs. I can remember the, the Rovers. I can remember yeah, way way back when. So to be given the opportunity to go over there and uh, and and not just, you know, it all started off when you know I'm still happy to say I've still got the lap record around there in a super touring car, even though I did it in '97 and it, I think super touring went there in '98, '99. It still didn't beat my lap record, which is great. So it'll remain forever. Uh, and we nearly won the thing, you know. Uh, I think after my first stint in the car in the red, 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 I was 20 odd seconds up the lead, yeah, up the road after two, one set safety car, even. And I loved the place. I just couldn't believe, you know, how amazing a piece of tarmac it is and, and how um, hypnotic it is to drive. It's just amazing. So then to be given the opportunity to go and drive for the Works HRT team. Um, yeah, Mark Scaife and Craig Lands teamed up, which meant either Scaife's or Landy's car was spare, and me and a van. Muller teamed up, which was interesting because we weren't getting on that well at the time. It was a great opportunity, and, I, you know, I loved it. And then, you know, went back again, and it didn't work out so well this time, but it was amazing to, you know, to do uh, Bathurst and, and Sat Sandown, actually. Um, in a works car, and my teammate was the great P. Peter Brock. That was really special. Or, although there was a sting in the tail, because you know I was in the car when when uh, when it retired. Through, I mean, I got a, I locked up, got a puncture, um, and I was limping back to the pits. And John Clarendon was looking to take advantage of 
uh, to try and get some track position and didn't know where I was, even though I was off the racing line. He then ploughed in. It was a big accident. I mean, had he hit me a foot further forward, I'd be dead. That's how big a shunt it was. But I was the bloke in the car and 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 um, Bro Brocky had not, it was the first, my first stint. So he never got to drive. That was a pretty hairy experience in that uh, I needed, um, I needed security. Oh, really? Oh, what, yeah. what from the, what from the fans? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah oh, yeah. right. Okay. Yeah. I needed security. Yeah. Not, not just at the circuit. Right, right. Yeah, at, at the airport. And everyone. Oh, wow. Right. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that was yeah. Was a bit. It was a bit. Um, it was a big eye, eye opener that. And you know, I not the car you... and it was one one of those things. But I wasn't prepared. You know, whilst I was enjoying all the build up with with Brocky and seeing, because I mean, he was an amazing man, a really special human being. And it was his last announced his last ever Bathurst, and to be the. The, the you know the bloke who effectively for in the fans eyes took it away from them seeing Bro Brocky on the mountain one last time was a was a tough thing and uh, you know the irony of that was um I went we we went round to Brocky's farm I think it was the Tuesday after Bathurst or the Wednesday and he was delightful about it and he, he was on the day you know he was he was delightful and he helped um they put a, I think they put a press release out or he did an interview on uh, nine, whoever it was, were doing the TV and basically exonerated me. So like, it wasn't his fault. Please, please, everyone, leave him alone. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. But yeah. I mean, it was serious. Yeah, it was serious. Yeah. Even, even I went to, uh, you know, at the time, went up to, stayed on in Australia for two weeks, I think, afterwards for holiday and headed up to Surface Paradise and then went to, stayed in Byron Bay and, uh, uh, and actually uh, proposed my wife at the time. Well, my, my then fiance, uh, my then girl, girlfriend, who then became my fiance. Um, I can remember being in Byron Bay and being in a bar and got heckled. Really, Blimey. yeah. That's that's like that's, it's, it's a big thing out there. Super Aussie V eight is 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 there oh, most of all, isn't it? It's, it's bigger massive. than it's bigger than Formula One out there by it? by a long way. Yeah, and it, you know, I, I've got really great fond memories of my time down in australia and you know i'd love to do some more but probably a bit too old now for for that for that game but yeah the cars were brilliant to drive um you know really yeah i mean here you go I'll, this is a true story when me and a van went down uh the 2000 for the 2000 bathurst we then arrived to do a test at philip island and we pitched up. Scafie was out in the car. Craig Lowndes was out in his car, but the car which we were going to have, which was Mark Scafie's car, he was out ma ma making sure it was, you know, set up well. Um, he came in. Evan got first dibs of um, dri driving the car first and, and did, I don't know, like 10 laps. And he was f***ing miles off of it. I mean, miles off it. Which, bear in mind, I mean, we're talking like five, four set, set seconds, like miles off. And he came in all a little bit, okay. <laughs> and I'm, I'm now, because we weren't getting on well, I'm at the back of the garage thing, you know, you wait till you hear this, pal. Okay, what, what, what is my time, you know? Well, you're about five seconds off. It's not possible. Anyway, I then thought, hell. So I then jumped in the car and guess what? After the similar sort of laps, I was miles off, miles okay. off. And I took myself off to the, but, Fortunately, I'd had the benefit of seeing a van and also knowing he's a world-class driver, he's probably quite tricky, this. <laughs> <laughs> and they were just very quirky. And I can remember, it was an exclusive test, so there was no one else there. I can remember there's a, there's a toilet block in the middle of Philip Island right next to where our pit gouges were. I took myself off there alone, looked in the, the mirror in the to toilets and basically had a, a long chat myself. It's like, come on, JP, you've got to sharpen your act up here. Yeah. We, we look shit. You know, they've imported us in at quite a few quid. We've got to raise our game. And you know what? Towards the end of the day, we, 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 were, we were on the numbers, but it took, it took us a long time to get our head into driving that. Really difficult, heavy, um, very easy to make a mistake, very easy to, you know, they, they have what's called a spool diff, which is basically it's welded up. It's yeah, a, yeah. Live, a live rear axle. And very easy to, on curbs, 
and the way the things are set up, it's very easy to just overheat the one of the rear tires. And once it once it overheats, that's it. You can't recover it. And we were just, you know, not driving it correctly. It took a long time to, but once once we got into it, I mean, they were great to drive. Bit, you know, quite scary, quick, heavy. Had a had a bit of a temper. Had big teeth. If you get, <laughs> get it wrong, it will bite you. But lush, you know, a H pattern Hollinger gearboxes. You know. So not a little bit the same as that earlier in the year. So I do the, some of the TV work for F1 TV and I did the coverage for when we had Alonso and Perez driving Aussie V8s down in uh, Melbourne earlier this year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that was interesting. The big thing, the difference there, Alonso sort of took to it like a duck to water, literally got it by the scruff of his neck. He was he was locking up, going over the curbs. He was off from the grass. Yeah. Perez, he looked, he couldn't handle it. Yeah. He just couldn't, you could see it. And they had a similar amount of running. They had a the, the regular driver alongside them, yeah. giving them tips about what to do. Alonso got Alonso got it. Perez just didn't get it at all in the yeah. whole time he was there. He just didn't, didn't. You know he didn't. They're, they're, they're not as uh, as raw now because they've got, sequen excuse me, they've got sequential gearboxes and they're a bit more refined now. But back, back, in, the, back in the day, God, they were, they, they were proper, proper big bits of kit, heavy, fast. I mean, at the end of the Conron straight, going through the flat out right under, which actually, is it flat? It's not flat all the way through. Yeah. I mean, it was where it was when I locked up my right front and got a punch. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, we're doing 185 yeah, miles yeah, now. Yeah. Quick, quick things. Yeah. Quick th yeah. Work. So talking about a, a classic circuit of Bathurst there, another classic circuit we're going to this weekend is Brands Hatch Grand Prix circuit. Yes. You've got some great memories there. Three wins well, it, in the day. You there. as a journalist now, you would have done, done your research and would know that who's won the most races around there in in Tur Tur Turnka. I, I don't know, so I'm asking you. You have. Is that right? By, <laughs> by a considerable margin. Is that right? Yeah, well, yeah. So you know, you've got to say, like, I, gen I genuinely it, didn't. I, I haven't teed it up to blow smoke up my own ass. I just, <laughs> I thought I might have done okay, but. Is that no, right? I mean, you, yeah, well, you know that I like a start. I've I've only got Brands Hatch as a circuit, so Indian Grand Prix. Right. But you've won 11 more races than anybody else around Brands Hatch. Is that right? Well, let's hope it's going to be you've got, you've um, got plus got, some this weekend. Well, you've got 26 wins around Brands Hatch in your career, and there's only three drivers who are actually in double figures. So Is that right? And in total, that would be, if I have a look at my data, you've won... Just under ten percent of the British touring car no, right. Brands Hatch. I think I deserve some sort of carriage clock from Jonathan Palmer or something. <laughs> Have you ever known Jonathan Palmer to give anything away? No, absolutely <laughs> nada. Funny <laughs> enough, I've just, I've just had a little. I've just had a text response with, with, with him last few days saying, "Look, if I do X, could you do Y?" No, no. <laughs> okay, all right then. Uh, although, they're in fairness, you know where you did, stand. did actually. When was it? Quite a few years ago now, going into finals when I won my second championship there, he did get on the phone and said, "Look, do you want do you want to use my director's suite for some of your guests?" Okay. So yeah, that's nice. Yeah, I mean, he, he sent you the bill. Statistics when it comes to a you know a touring car career, you can kind of you can kind of twist things to an extent because we've got a lot at the moment of oh. He's got to, to 200 races, it's great. He's got to 300 races, and it's like, yeah, but when there's 30 races in a season, yeah. those kind of landmarks do come along. But, you know, your win tally, for example, even, you know, someone like Ash Sutton is going to have to do a lot of winning to get up to, to 97. Yeah. And if you look through the years, again, based on the stats that I've got together, we've had 1,263 races in the btcc where you've been able to score points so that means that you know jason's won nearly eight percent of the races in the entire history of the championship and whichever way you want to spin the statistics you've got to say that's quite an impressive it's thing. above average isn't it <laughs> yeah yeah it's, it's slightly better well, than, no, but definitely that's... not in the mediocre stage it's it's not bad no well, i think you're that's right it's it? <laughs> average driver yeah but going back to Brands Hatch, do you know yeah. what? It's a brilliant circuit. You know, there, there's, there's tracks in the UK. You know, I love Alton Park. Great, great track. Brands Hatch Grand Prix circuit. 
um, you know, Thruxton. But but Brands, the Grand Prix circuit, is a very, very special place. Um, and uh, it's very, very difficult to get everything really sweet and working well there because, A, there's, there's two absolute... Uh, completely different bits of tarmac in the, in the old circuit, which is hardly ever used. And then you've got new circuit, which is used every hour of every single week. So that's all smooth. Okay, it's had a bit of resurfacing, but yeah, there's a big difference in grip between the old bit and the new bit. Um, you know, you've got fast corners, very fast corners out the back. You've got overhanging trees, which hold the moisture. There's a lot going on. And also the barriers uh, are pretty close. So if you make a mistake or you get involved in the shunt out the back, you're going to hit something hard. That's all quite good stuff, isn't it? It's quite sexy, yeah. that. And, and yeah. that, that adds to it. The same with Alton Park, you know. They're, 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 you know, they're great, they're great circuits. So, yeah, I'm, I, I always look forward to going to, to, to Brands Hatch. More often than not, I've been in with a shout to win. And actually, in all honesty, I think there was four, another four championships that I should have won. Uh, but didn't uh, but it's always great to end at Brands Hatch Grand Prix because it does produce some brilliant racing and it's hard on the cars you know as we as we saw with you know that awful Camish experience a few years ago you know mm-hmm. breaks went pear shaped and uh, you know it's, it can produce a really exciting finale and I think you know looking at you know the runners and riders who are in in it this year, I think it's going to be very exciting. Very, very exciting. So, how different, you, how different is it being on the outside looking in from you know someone who's been in the middle of that title battle before when you're kind of having to keep an eye on your rivals and make sure that you're getting the points off them? How is it as a driver then with your experience when you're kind of watching it all unfold around you and you're not involved in the mix? Well, I, I'll tell you one thing I certainly won't, won't do is I won't do what most of the grid did for Gordon Shedden in whatever it, day it was. I won't be putting my indicator on, let, 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 let in title contenders come past. That ain't in my makeup, my makeup. So I'll be, I'll be telegraphing to all of them, stay out my f-ing way, because I need to win some races. Hmm. So don't come and lock swords with me, because guess what? I've got nothing to lose. I'm sure they'll know, know that anyway. Um, <laughs> they might have but, an idea. So yeah, my focus at the weekend is oh, you know, I need I need to win I need to win a race at the weekend. That's and and you know, I think I think because it's a lot to do with sh- chassis round now, I think we've got a decent chance, providing I can put together my quad qualifying lap. Um but uh, you know you've got you've got Tom Ingram, uh, Ash Sutton, Such- Such- Jake Hill, and the outsider Colin Turkington. Uh, well, the outsider for me for this weekend is Turkington. It's going to be really, really quite stressy for all of them, apart from probably Ash and Colin, because they've done it before. Um, I think on, I think probably on paper, I think Ingram out of the between Ingram and uh, Jake Hill, I think Ingram's probably going to be the most composed out of those two. I think just the, their their psyche, their characters. But I think we're going to see some fireworks. I really do. I think I think you know on paper Tom's going to be fast around there. Cause he's got a great engine. He's got a great great car. He's really at one with it. Um, uh, J- Jake's going to be uh, eleven tenths. And and will be fast. Um, is the has the Ford in Ash's hands got the best chassis out there? No, but they've got a dragster of an engine, and you can never discount Colin and a BMW. Do you think this is the hardest decider to call? I mean, if you look back through the years, you've got to go back to. 2011, you, Matt, and Gordon for, you know, an occasion when the points were so close. Mm. The last couple of years, you know, you've had maybe 15, 20 points between the top two going into a weekend. Do you think that makes it more open than ever? Oh, without a doubt, yeah. I think it's going to be really twitchy all weekend for those guys because, you know, 
they're, they're, they're all going to be, because it's so tight, they're all going to be uh, slightly more cautious than if they then had to catch up 15 or 20 points. If they were 15 or 20 behind, they'd take a few more risks. And actually, um, having been in that, those in both all of those situations, you, you know, if you're playing catch up and you've got you've got quite a few points, you've got a haul. Then actually, you're a bit more natural. And mm. um, I think once 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 you start to get a bit tight, that you've got you know a, a small deficit or a small um, advantage to protect and maintain, then actually you can you're not as free and as natural as perhaps you might be that you know i think it's going to be very interesting all weekend uh to see how, how that how that evolves uh i mean i think just making some statements here i think i think ash is an extraordinary talent is a, a i mean re, re, really is a fantastic racing driver um i kind of you know colin e equally He's not my kind of driver. It's a bit percentage, a bit seconds good enough because that'll add up. He's not a down and out racer like Ash is. I'd rather watch Ash than Colin from the from this from the grandstands. But I want it to go either the way of Tom or, or Jake because it's nice to have some new blood. And I think we'll see. Well, whilst you know, we'd obviously see you know fantastic. Uh, emotion from from um, from Ash and Colin, we'd see a much bigger fanfare and a much bigger uh, emotional outburst, and it would mean more to those two youngsters if they want what want it. So yeah, I, and and you know what, I'm not going to call it. I, I I like them both as as lads. Uh, I think I think um, uh, I think I think probably. Tom has the slight upper hand in that he's just a bit more experienced and a bit more, a bit more calm on all the other days apart from finals day. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because this is a really important moment. So yeah, I just, I just, you know, I hope one of those two, the two new guys, get, get a chance to win. Uh, and that doesn't mean to say I don't want Ash to win or I don't want Colin to win, but I'd just be nice if the young guys can win it. But but most of all, I don't want anyone to have shit luck that day. You know, it needs yeah. to be needs to be you know not to not have shit shit luck to not be impeded by anyone else or to be helped by anyone else. I just want the best guy on the day to it to you know to win because actually, when that happens, when they're on the way home, that's when it feels the most. You know that you, you, that that's when it really feels when you've made it happen yourself. And your team, that's when it means the most. So fingers crossed, everyone will be reliable. Fingers crossed, they won't get involved in daft scrapes and then it'll be a great scrap in the final race of the day, which obviously I'll, I'll go on and win and 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 I'll be looking. All three, at maybe, all three. Well, the then last he gets time... the hundred. He gets the hundred then. Well, yeah. Well, in fact, the last time that was done was me at Bransach on finals day in 09. <laughs> Exactly. Uh, with an audacious move to go around the outside of uh, Giovinardi and Colin ran the outside of both at Pat Paddock. So I talking think, about, I don't, I don't you remember that? No, no Matt, well, Matt, I'm I'm too young to remember that far back. I, mean, but you know, I remember it. Look, looking at it, go, going down the the start finish straight, thinking, do I? I mean, it's ridiculous, but do I? Don't, don't I can remember thinking, it, I'm going to say send it. And I can remember getting, you know, going there and thinking, oh, I've gone in too quick, gone too quick. You know, you start to tighten up. I'm like, oh, hold on, hold on. I might, might go away with it. And I can remember getting to the, the top of the crest and I started to fall down. I then heard the crowd. And oh, right. Believe it or not, I heard yeah. the crowd and I thought, right, I'm through. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I was so well, quite focused on trying to keep the thing out of the gravel. Uh, well, talking about the crowd. So we've got this big championship decider. Yeah. But the crowd, I think you're going to have a big crowd this weekend. And I think one of the big draws is, is this Jason's last British touring car meeting? You know, that's and, and that's a big question. And, and earlier in the year, you announced that it would be your final season. But then there's been a few 
a few sort of discussions about whether it will be, whether it won't be. So I suppose the question that everybody really wants to ask, is this going to be your last British touring card meeting? Uh, well, as, thing, as things stand now, yes. Um, uh, y- yes, yes, it is, as things stand now. That's not to say, um, you know, over the winter, I'll, I'll, I might regret that decision and try and put other things in play. Um, and I, I guess, you know, there's, you know, certain members of the press have picked up on stuff. And and just to clarify, you know, I've I really enjoyed my time with BTC Racing this year. We really loved it, actually, even though there's been quite a lot of frustration in terms of our straight line speed. But I know that's got nothing to do with the team. And I know how hard they've worked behind the scenes to try and find even the tiniest bit which we can improve on and it's been a real joy to be involved in that and um honest to god at the beginning of the year i generally thought because of their performance last year and because of what we've been told about the Sport engine i honestly thought i'm gonna win some races here yeah so it does feel at the moment like you know certainly after some of my performances this year in, in particular um Stetterton, which was the hardest physical race of the year by a long way. Mm. And knowing how good I felt, part of me goes, oh, do you know what? There's still loads more left in me. Uh, but one of the reasons I decided to stop or, or to take control of my exit was, A, I didn't want to be able, or more, more to point, find a seat which commercially works because um, it's it's out, it's that's my living you know it's got to work commercially and it's got to work commercially for my spot sponsors and partners uh, but also one of the other reasons is uh, and you'll know this to, to a certain degree sean is that uh even there's only 10 weekends it's not it's 24 hours a day oh yeah seven days a week and actually that takes its toll on on you know my family because you know, the stress levels uh, involved in it and the politics and the scheming and just all that <laughs> fucking stuff. It's tiresome. Yeah, yeah. It's, t- it's tiresome, not just for me, for me. And, you know, it wasn't 15 years ago. You know, I'd be up, right, six o'clock in the morning, right, what, what, what can I put my fingers into now? And that gets a bit tiresome, but also, you know, it has an impact on your family life. And yeah, it's probably fair to say I, I'm quite hard work, um, be, you know, during during the race season because I'm just, I'm on it. And also the off season's quite tricky as well because you're then trying to get stuff all in play for the, for the next year. So looking at all of that sort of stuff, you know, I had made a decision that it would be my last touring car season. Uh, but also, I've been really quite touched by the amount of support I've had from fans, and the, you know, the vast majority are, are not saying, "Yeah, go on, <whistles> sling your hook, you're past it." Quite the contrary, you know, pe- people are saying, "Look, please, please, you know, we, we you still can't contribute." My team are still saying that, but at the moment, I don't have a deal in play for next year, and um, I need to sit and, you know digest stuff over the winter and see what's what so yeah it'll be uh, you know it'll be um quite an emotional week- weekend i would imagine you know un- underneath you know my my, <laughs> my, my perhaps uh, blunt uh, forthright uh, public persona you know i'm quite a soft softy at heart and you know, that there'll be a lot of reflection on, you know, all the many, many, many people of which there's hundreds that have uh, really helped me in my career. Uh, you know, en- engineers and team managers and, uh, you know, mechanics and technicians, all, all those sorts of characters, but also, you know, all, all the people that which which I work with, uh, you know, sp- sp- sponsors, you know, what, what, you know, great supporter of mine has been Adrian Flux Insurance. And, you know, David Flux, who owns the cut company, and Jerry Buke, which is a general manager there. You know, I've worked alongside those 
that you know that 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 company and, the, and these people for many 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 years and when things when the chips have been down they've supported me and you know the list is is long you know people at silverline tools who who helped put the chevrolet deal together ian harrison from from all the people at triple eight when we got that mg you know my business partner hardy John, johnson cash your tesco it's lots of brilliant sponsors yeah. and, co and commercial partners i've had over the years so you know, reflecting on all of that, I'm sure will be quite an emotional time. If you were stuck, it'll probably be, feel very weird on Sunday night, actually. Uh, even just imagine if wild, stupid imagination, even if I won all three races, I still think it will be pretty, it's going to be quite a difficult moment to walk away. If you were sat there as Jason Plato, winner of. 70 British touring car races <laughs> rather than winner of 97 and being so close to that century yeah. would it be an easier decision to make or are you at that stage of your career now where 97 wins is just a number and if you get to 100 you get it and if you don't you don't uh, I don't really know the answer to that actually because because it is just a number it is just a number and you know I know there's at least four wins which were taken off me through infringements, which weren't actually infringements. You know, there was one when Van Muller ran, ran out of fuel at Silverstone and we had, we had a collision because he'd ran, ran out of fuel in the last lap. You know, I won that race that was taken away. So actually, I know actually deep down side of 100, I know that. But it is just a number. However, it's three short of a big number. <laughs> and it's a number no one else has got. Yeah, and you know what? I really want to do 100. I really want to do 100. So, yeah, of course, that's still in the back of my mind. But I've, I've also, I've also um, um, processed that, that if I need to, have to, I'm going, I'm going to, because I am at the moment, um, you know, Brands will be my last touring car race and, and, unless, unless, uh, unless, I change my mind or unless but certainly at the moment it is my last and I can I can cope with that you know I can I can lie straight in my bed and go do you know what 97 it's all right it's not bad it's well, not as nice as 100 but 100 not as nice as 101 either <laughs> so what what that says to me <clears throat> what that says to me is that actually you're carrying on next year because I can't see <laughs> it does, I can't it, I can't see, I, you're the that. sort of person who's who's no, I'm not a control <laughs> freak, but you're a person who's got their finger on the pulse, if you like. But anyway, I think we're coming to the end of us because you've got plenty of other stuff to do as well. But you, uh, it's been absolutely great to chat with you. <laughs> Lots of fantastic insight into all sorts of stuff, including what we just talked about. But the, yeah. but good luck this weekend. I, I, know, I, I, I want you to win at least one race before you say, right, that's it, I'm going off to do other stuff now. Because you have been a real foundation and a, and a rock of British touring cars. And have, have really, I would say, been a good 50% of, of what makes British touring cars great. Definitely over the past, well, it's, it's 25 years now, isn't it? And so congratulations, champ. You know, I mean, it, it, let's hope you can get that win. And, and I think there won't be anybody in the paddock who would, who would want to deny you that. Yeah, well, that's very kind of you to say, and I really appreciate that, Sean. I mean, I mean, yeah, of of late, um, uh, yeah, me, me, me and Matt Neal are actually relatively friendly nowadays. You know? <laughs> and and do you know what? I spoke to Matt at. Uh, I did a piece for. Not kill when we were up there. We we with him did an interview to, together. And, you know, when the cameras were off and we were walking back to go and do whatever we're doing on a Saturday night, uh, he said, look, if, if you don't get, you know, you know, if you change your mind, you don't get your deal sorted sort out for next year, mate, come and drive with us. We're, 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 we'll try and get you to 100. And actually, I nearly signed with them this year, believe it or not. Believe yeah. that. Yeah, I, ne that I nearly be. did. I, ne I nearly did. And then the, B the BTC opportunity came up and that was a better route for me to take. But yeah, I nearly ended up in Dynamics car. Can you imagine that? Can that would be a big that? story. Yeah, be, yeah. I, I wonder what Barry would say. Oh, <laughs> Barry actually, Barry. Interesting <laughs> enough, Barry was all over it. Oh, brilliant. Okay. Yeah, I mean, well, my, right. my, my beef over the years with Matt is only just because we were just, 
Well, you're so competitive with each we, other. We were you're just walking lumps like out of each other every weekend, yeah. and, and yeah. that's where it comes from. And he's a competitive yeah. guy, and, you know, it's family team versus, you know, it was just like that. Yeah, and yeah. that's yeah. just the way it is. And, and uh, you know, we've seen it over the years with, you know, not just in touring cars, but when there's, you know, great rivalries, when, when those rivalries stop on track, actually, by and large, a good proportion of those pe people actually do go and have a beer to get together and, and yeah. share some share, share some truths. <laughs> but, it, but, but that's like sport altogether. It, it doesn't matter what sport. If you haven't got rivalries, you haven't got sport, really. It's then just a hobby, isn't it? You know, yeah. it, it, you've got to have a bit of grit in there to make it happen. But one thing you just mentioned, which, which I haven't mentioned, which I meant to, is family. And also just two people who I know are, your probably biggest fans yeah, yeah. is your mum and dad who I'm are still that. coming to a, most yeah. of the races you know and i've seen them there a few times this year when, when i've seen them there but that's great is is that still an important part for you to have your mum and dad there cheering you on oh absolutely yeah absolutely because you know um you know they, they, they've been there since i was 11 years old in karting and, and um you know only child, and I had brothers and sisters, and we wouldn't be speaking now because we just wouldn't have been able to afford it. Um, but you know, the, the the sacrifices that they made, um, not not just financially, but in terms of you know their 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 life and their time, yeah. and and um, yeah, they, they've been they've been. I reckon I could count on one hand actually, the races they've not been to, and that's only been through through illness actually and anyway here's a great story and it's true well two great stories one i was at bathurst i think it was 2000 i'm walking down the pit lane on the tuesday before the next thing me old man said, i'm like well, they're there i'm like what the what what what, what the <laughs> f are you doing here well you well, didn't we, know they were coming no 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 well we just thought We'll go right. the other stuff. We'll go all the way around the world. Yeah, yeah, and, and that was ace. And, and and actually, before that, when I got my Williams driving 97, you know, that was the first time in my career where actually I signed a piece of paper where after signing the piece of paper, I'd send an invoice and a big check would come. And these big checks would arrive on a monthly basis. And uh, that was quite a nice experience. And then, you quite know... Nice. Rather than the month, other way around. Yeah, 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 yeah. And within a month, you know, I've, yeah. I've, I've then... Because we could write checks, you know, we wrote checks back then days. Within a month, I then got my checkbook out and wrote out a check to buy a Ferrari. So th th things were good. And um, I remember uh, as a little thank you, and this was in the 97 season, I had bought them a, uh, a shells, like a five star thing, you know, first class flights, da 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 da. And I presented this to my mum and dad when I went over there. And my mum opened it and was like, wow, this is amazing. She went, oh, no, that's not knock ill weekend. You'll have to change the date. Oh, we can't go. I'm like, no, no, you don't understand. It's the fucking Se Seychelles, mum. Get yourself away. I had to change it. I had to change the date. Really? Yeah, 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 yeah. They came to not, not, not That's kill. quite a good... You should, you should get Gordon Shen to put it on the advertising. <laughs> Better than the Seychelles. Yeah. Seychelles or knock ill. So no, yeah, but that that's true. That so I had to change it. Yeah, and she, she I mean, she literally said, Look, if you if you can't check change it, will not will not go. I'm like, no, you don't. No, you've got to. You've got to. <laughs> so yeah, they, they've been there. They, you know, and they love it. They love it. And you know, my 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 old man is um is obviously very knowledgeable. Yeah, yeah. Because he's been around for so long. Um, he doesn't get involved, and I know that there's a lot of, you know, is that express version there carting dad. So he's never really been. Even though we did carting, and he was my dad, he's never really been a carting dad. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and he just sits in the background and kind of watches stuff. And I can see him like scratching around and looking, thinking, "Oh," but he never vocalizes um, anything. He keeps it to himself. Yeah. So yeah, yeah it's really important, you know. My, you know, having two girls, uh, and we also know that girls can't drive. We, we know that, don't we? <laughs> That's that's a joke, by the way. That, that's your, your, I have a chat with your teammate it, Jade at the weekend. It's a, no, but that's just a joke. But it, it, it is a joke. But having two girls, you know, they're they're not that interested in motor mot racing or, or haven't been for many, many years. But it'll be really, really nice to have them there because they know the importance of this weekend. And 
you know, uh, yeah. So, yeah, it's going to be an interesting, an interesting weekend. I hope we're competitive. I think we'll all be. I won't be, you know, giving any quarter to anybody. Um, and let's hope we can, you know, walk away from there um, on Sunday night with a with a pop in my hand and some, un, you know, some very unfit fizzy sh champagne <laughs> and a big plastic trophy. Uh, and hold my head up high for you know my, my contribution to British Touring Cars. Well, to be honest with you, Jason, even if that doesn't happen, which we all hope it does, you can hold your head up high because what a fantastic career you had. So we're going to have to leave you now because otherwise we'll be able to talk all day. We'll never be able to get this on the internet. It'll break the internet. <laughs> but thanks very much for your time and also your my honesty pleasure. as well. It's been absolutely fantastic. Thanks very much for Matt for, for joining in as well. Good luck at the weekend. Thank you very much. I, for one, have got my fingers crossed for you. hope we get another win on the board. Thanks so much. Thanks very much. You're welcome.